Hi, my name is Brad. I've been a pastor for 29 years in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm an artist, a musician, recently an author, and as you can see, I'm also an experienced connoisseur of food. <laughs> Daniel Plan, here I come. <laughs> but more importantly, I'm a brother, a father, an uncle, a friend, a son, and a husband to a very beautiful woman going on 35 years. My My wife, Donna, and I have two remarkable Amer married adult children who are both walking with the Lord and have wonderful spouses. But most important, the most important job we have is being grandparents to the three most remarkable grandchildren in the entire world. One was just born two weeks ago, and his name is Malachi, and there's another one on the way at the end of uh, May, so we're very excited. We're going from two to 100%. Just a side note, this is a freebie. You know what grandchildren are, don't you? They're God's reward to you for not having killed your own children during puberty. <laughs> As you already know, I have bipolar disorder. I am not bipolar. I have bipolar disorder. And there's a big difference. I'm the founder of Fresh Hope, which is a network of Christian mental health support groups throughout the country. And I must say, it wasn't by my design, it was by God's we, we believe in empowering individuals who have a mental health challenge, along with working together as a team, not separate, along with their loved ones and their family members, to live a full and rich life in spite of, in spite of having a mental health challenge. Fresh Hope was born over five years ago from my own frustration following a relapse seven years after my initial diagnosis. When I got out of the hospital, I realized that I needed support and I needed to learn a lot more. Now, I'm going to be honest, and this isn't a judgment on anyone, but I attended numerous groups. I tried them, and I went for a while, and after a while, I would quit going because it actually made me more depressed. I was getting worse. What I saw were people that were chronically mentally ill left helpless, the bleeding talking to the bleeding. And it was so discouraging to me and I, I was frustrated because for me, I wanted to live. I wanted my life back. I knew I had to take my life back and it would never be the same, but in many respects, I just wanted to get back to enjoying life to a certain degree. It didn't have to be perfect. And for me, there was this hope factor, the hope factor that came alone through Christ. And maybe it was because I was a pastor, I don't know, but I certainly know that there are things worse than mental illness that families can have to deal with. And from my perspective, I wanted to push through, and yet I had no self-confidence to move forward. So for those five years after my relapse, I had to begin then to figure out how to live in spite of this. And I quit going to the groups, and I just tried to work my own program, if you will. And along the way, I discovered some principles. And um, quite honestly, um, what happened is I would go to my doctor's appointments, and I would complain constantly to him about, I can't believe there's, there's no... There's nothing out there. There's no Christian support groups that are positive. I can't believe it, and I can't find materials. I would Google and Google and Google. Those guys were a year behind us in starting. Maybe I would have found you. And I think because I'm a good German and I'm a good Lutheran, <laughs> we have to complain a lot. And I'm not sure it's because I'm German or Lutheran. It's but I complained so much that finally one day my doctor said to me, why don't you start a group? 
and you write the materials. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah. And he said, I'll help you. That's all it took. He was willing to put his name on it. You see, I'm one of those pastors who fell. Mental illness raked such havoc in my life. In 1995, I was pastoring the 13th fastest growing church in North America. And I had an episode with the law that landed me up in the newspapers and the media for an entire year of my life. I went to treatment for three weeks, came back home, and they told the church it's mental illness. And the, some of the leaders said it doesn't matter. It's going to slow the growth of the church down if we have you come back. So we're asking you to resign. And I did. But a group of people, a small group of people, came around us and they said, we want you to be our pastor. We're starting a church and we're calling you to be our pastor, but we don't want you to work. We want you to just get better. Then when you're done getting better, if, if you want to be our pastor, which that's what we want, <laughs> then you could do it. If not, you can move on and then they gave me an 18% pay raise. <laughs> and um, I gotta tell you, if it wasn't for that group of people and my immediate family, I am certain I would not be here on this earth today. I was so sick. I was so desperate to die. And all I could tell you is the most courageous thing I've ever done in my life was that I continued to live when I wanted to die. But that is in the... <laughs> but that's in the DNA, if you will, of our church now. I still pastor those people 18 years later. Some of those people I've known for 29 years and I tell one of the ladies, honey, can you please smile? Aren't my sermons helping after 29 years? Please <laughs> smile. She's German and Lutheran. <laughs> Fresh hope then has been born out of my journey. It's, I don't, I don't have a PhD. I, well, I do, but it's from hard, from a hard journey, that's all I can say. And I wish my story was clean, I wish it was nice, and it's not, it's nasty. But my story is one that I'm standing here today as living proof that I don't care what you're going through, I don't care how bad it is right now, God can take anything and make it work for your good. And I'm the poster child for hope. <laughs> a big, big Bob's poster child for hope. <laughs> if you need hope today, find me. You can have some of mine. I found out that the more of it you give away, the more of it you get. You can borrow hope. It can be lent to you. But I want to tell you, if you're going through hell right now, don't you dare stop. If you stop, you're in hell. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Well, they said we only have 10 minutes, it's over, and I'm not even halfway through. So could we receive the offering now? <laughs> So here's the deal, folks. In the last two years, I've, re I've been, re um, been restoring and reconciling my relationship with the church I originally left. God is so good and he works in phenomenal ways. Fresh Hope, well, I could tell you a couple of things that's unique and different about us. First of all, we work with the family and the loved ones and those who have the mental health diagnosis together. It's a team effort. 
We talk about a circle of accountability where people get better because the more the doctor knows, the more your wife knows, your spouse, the more everybody knows, the better everybody can get. And we've seen phenomenal things happen when, when someone that's a set of parents and their son won't come and he keeps smoking pot and he's reeling out of control and he's in a group home and he's attempted suicide. These parents come weeping and then all of a sudden across the room, a young woman says, oh, that's where I was at about three years ago. And the exchange that happens, and then we divide in the second half of our meetings. We never intended to start groups. I thought we were gonna start one group and then when people found out who was leading it, they'd leave, seriously. And instead, they kept coming, and then they started asking for groups to start in all these other places, and we're just trying to keep up right now. But let me tell you something. I can prove to you that Fresh Hope works. There's most of what's in recovery can be taught, yes. But more so than anything, I believe, fresh, lively living that brings about fresh hope when you have mental illness, is caught, not taught. I believe chronic mental illness is actually catching. Now, what do I mean by that? If you put me in the hospital and put me on a bunch of new medication, and then you send me out to a day program somewhere, I'm going to learn how to be that way. But if you put me with people who are challenging me and encouraging me and find that build up my self-confidence, I'm going to have a future. I'm going to have hope. And more than anything, I don't know about your God. Well, I do. Our God is quite capable. Nothing is impossible with him. Nothing. <clears throat> I just want to point out that almost 99% of our people who were suicidal that have been coming to Fresh Hope groups, 87% of them say that they're no longer suicidal. The other 14% um, say that they are no longer have ideations at least. 71.4% of our people who were hospitalized prior to coming to Fresh Hope where in fact, they have not been hospitalized since. I tell every person that walks in the door, I tell our facilitators, we'll by the way, we'll help you start a group at your church if you want. We tell, I, I like to tell the people, today is the sickest that you absolutely ever need to be again. Now does that mean they might relapse? They might, their brain may mess up on them? Sure, yeah. But you know what? You're not going to be as sick as long. You're not going to go as deep because you got us. And we're going to be with you. And you're not going to be alone. And more than that, we're going to, we're going to pump you full of God's hope. And we're going to allow him to give you that sure and certain hope that God can take anything and he can make it for your good. In 29 years of pastoral ministry and counseling, I'm ashamed to admit, I have never seen lives change so drastically and so easily. My wife and I were no strangers prior to all of this to mental illness. Both of us are loved ones too. Some of you that are loved ones that don't have a diagnosis, you forget that most of us who have a diagnosis were raised by people who maybe didn't have a diagnosis, but... And by the way, loved ones, many of you end up taking medicine because you're dealing with those of us who are already taking medicine. <laughs> that is a diagnosis also. But my mother-in-law committed suicide so many years ago out here in California. And we never felt so alone in all of our lives. And so today, for us, this is a redeeming moment. We're back in California. Thank God we're not in Nebraska today. But we're out in California. And God is redeeming pain. 
I think a fresh hope like this, just to celebrate recovery, is for those who are hurting with hangups and whatever that line is. <laughs> fresh hope is for those who have a mental health diagnosis. So I say to you today, if you can't hear the hope in my voice, then come and get some hugging hope. God is good. Don't quit. Don't stop. Keep going.